Hello viewers, this is Showman from oil and gas field quality control. Today I came with a pipeline process. This is one of the initial process we need to follow before starting the pipeline welding. The subject is pipeline stringing, which in other terms also pipe laying. Let us start. Before come to the subject of stringing directly, which is very small subject to discuss actually, we will also discuss pipeline handling and storage, both coated and uncoated, and the pipeline transportation, uploading and offloading, line pipe end protections, and finally pipe stringing. So first let us come with the pipe handling and storage. Generally, underground pipelines, the pipes are externally FB coated. The full term is fusion bonded epoxy coating. This coating is durable enough to protect the pipe from external corrosion when it is underground. For above ground pipe, generally for the liquid services like crude oil, not externally coated. If we apply our common sense, we will see that the externally coated pipe, we need to take a lot of protection to save the coating from any external damage. This damage can happen during pipe storage. You can see some photos over here. If the pipe touch together, the coating will rub each other and it can create the scratches and damage to the coating. That's why there will be some nylon ropes. This is the easy and cheapest way when the pipe will be stored side by side or stacked one over another. For the uncoated pipe storage, generally side by side protection is not required. From the store there is a protective coating applied on the newly manufactured uncoated pipes or bare pipes that is enough to protect the pipe during the storage. It will be generally kept in a bunch as delivered from manufacturer. To protect the line pipes from both end, we are generally using plastic pipe end caps or PVC pipe end caps. Some photos are self-explanatory here. These caps are also used for piping fittings like elbows, flange faces, T or nipples. All sensitive materials are supplied from the manufacturer including the line pipe with pipeline end caps. Line pipes subjected to handling many times, starting from manufacturing to the manufacturer storage to the site warehouse and finally at the site right of way. Even after keeping in the right of way, after welding also, the line pipes has to handle a lot of torture. Generally, line pipes are supplied to the contractor with a machine bevel at the end to facilitate welding production during the pipeline construction process. To protect the bevel, there are metallic bevel protectors for the line pipes if the pipe is coming specially from overseas. Generally bevel protectors are mandatory for all the line pipes which are coming from outside the country. Transportation of line pipe. During transportation of uncoated pipe, you can see the photo at the left. Uh, the pipes are tied together especially for the big bore pipes to keep the pipe ovality as minimum. Sometimes we need to put some cross supports at both ends. End protectors are sometimes necessary, sometimes not based on the scope of the work. It can be directly tied with uh, iron chain which are prohibited if we transport the externally coated pipes. If the pipes are internally coated then end caps are mandatory in all the cases to protect also the internally coating of pipe. You can see the externally coated FB pipes are segregated keeping a wooden skid in between or there can be some rubber tires or some kind of rubber padding to protect the lines from rubbing and the whole pipes in the trailer we need to wind up with some nylon slings. Line pipe loading and offloading. The easy process contractor is following by using nylon slings and the crane. But in the manufacturer facilities, since it is the repetitive process, they sometimes use. They are using magnetic offloader where the pipe is held by the magnetic power of the spreader bar. Or the pipe can be handled from the both ends also. 
you can see in the photo at the left. Now the pipe is going to the site, but is the site is ready to handle that heavy load of the trailers or is it wide enough for the trailer to pass through and offload the pipes over the right of way? So pipeline access roads are termed also as RUW or right of way. This is generally 30 to 50 meter wide based on the pipe diameter and the equipments being handled on that area. This area has to be a little bit compacted and it should be good enough for the trailers or heavy equipments to travel all over. So you can see some photos where the access road or right of way is being prepared and trailers are offloading the pipe. So this is termed as pipeline stringing which we are coming. While preparing the access road before pipe stringing the pipeline trenching also being done uh, at a time so that the heavy equipment or excavators no need to go many times over there. In desert areas like in Saudi Arabia or any Gulf countries there are two three types of soil available for example rocky area, sandy area and subkha area, wadi areas. In the rocky areas trenching is not that easy. So beside the stringing from the other side of the uh, right of way uh, also the rock breakers are working because it is taking long time and in parallel stringing and welding also ongoing. After the right of way and the trench is prepared uh, the next sequence comes with pipe stringing. Before the pipe stringing we should have some marl pads and over the marl pads uh, sometimes we put wooden skids or the, some rubber tires to protect the FBA coating. This is I am talking about the underground pipe stringing. First the uh, pipe strung over the right of way, the welding has been done, then the welded string more or less one kilometer long are being lowered into the pipeline trench. Individual prefabricated pipe sections are strung along and adjacent to the excavated trench. These pipes are strung on the walk side of the trench so they are accessible to the construction personnel. For the above ground pipelines this case is different. Different in the sense uh, they don't need to string the pipe uh, on the right of way. They can directly put the pipe over the typical pipe supports which can be concrete and the right side which can be made of iron some typical types of pipe supports which you can see at the middle as well as at the left. At the left the pipeline you can see it is not a naked pipeline it is insulated. This photo is for an area where the temperature sometimes goes below the freezing temperature so liquid or oil flowing inside the pipeline will be freezed if it is not insulated and being heated during specially in the winter. Right most place there is no welding on the pipeline these are the pipes uh, installed with flanges and at the center this pipeline is welded uh, and it is on the ring girder. So these are all typical examples of above ground pipeline. So in these cases pipes can be directly uh, put over the concrete supports and it can be welded over there to uh, save some time for double handling. Now pipe stringing for the underground pipeline. You can see the pipes are strung over the pipeline with an angle. This is a practical way to keep the pipe bevel ends accessible for the grinderman who will clean the bevel ends to facilitate the well fit up. At the right you can see the pipes are kept on the wooden skid. Also at the left it is on the single wooden skid. Pipe should not touch the ground. The minimum clearance from the ground is required 150 mm or 6 inches. And during the welding the pipes will be again lifted to give the welder an access for overhead welding. So that's all for pipe stringing guys today. I will come back with the next pipeline process which will be lowering. Be with me. If you like it, please share and subscribe to my channel to inspire me more. Thank you. Signing off. Showman. So